next we'll continue our discussion of recent phishing attempts uh, today we have already discussed that social networking websites uh, have become uh, the popular phishing holes because of their popularity and the because of their um, uh, capability to send and receive direct messages um, therefore the previous mediums which are being used such as emails the, me the methods and the mechanisms and the approaches which were being incorporated into the um, email sms voice calls mm, those are now being used um, on the uh, social media so those have been successfully imported into social media and um, the uh, are, are used to scammers are using uh, using those techniques to attack uh, users to get the fraudulent uh, inform information such as the uh, credit card information to install malware and and, and so on so mm, mm, but uh, scammers constantly devise new phishing techniques to avoid detection um, some recent developments include AI phishing um, the AI phishing uses, uses generative artificial intelligence tools to create phishing messages. Yesterday we discussed um, that how the um, generative AI is a problem um, to uh, in case of the misinformation and disinformation. Remember we discussed that topic of information disorder last Thursday and um, the we uh, discussed that the 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 coverage and the analysis and detection tools uh, which are basically used to find misinformation and disinformation uh, of the information disorders um, will be less effective or may not uh, may not be effective at all if those images those information uh, those modifications uh, content modifications and all those approaches, then types that we discussed last time, um, are being generated by the generative artificial in intelligence tools to create those content. So um, the uh, the AI phishing uses the generative um, uh, artificial intelligence tools to create phishing messages. These tools can generate tailored emails and text messages that lack spelling errors, grammatical inconsistencies, and other common red flags of the phishing attempts. Today, we, I will show you some emails where you can easily identify these red flags, but uh, since the, the, the AI is maturing and uh, with the almost near perfection, so in this case, it becomes uh, difficult to find those common clues, common red flags, um, uh, of the uh, phishing attempts. Um, generative AI can also help scammers um, scale their operations um, the, uh, the some, by using some of the uh, modern tools uh, the, uh, such as the generative AI scammers can create even more convincing messages in only minutes Previously, it used to take hours to draft, to craft a phishing email manually. Uh, but with the AI, the, um, the phishing attacks uh, could be launched against the high value targets, against the multitude of targets by using the in a less time. Uh, scammers also use image generators and voice synthesizers to add further credibility to their schemes. For example, in 2019, the attacker used AI to clone um, the voice of an energy company CEO and scam a bank manager out of uh, USD $243,000. Quishing uh, uses fake QR codes um, embedded in emails and text messages are posted in the real world. Quishing allows hackers to hide malicious websites and softwares in the plain sight. For example, um, the US FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, warned last year of a scam where criminal replaces QR codes on public parking meters with their own codes that steal uh, payment data. Um, hybrid phishing, hybrid phishing attacks combine the voice phishing that we discussed already with other methods to evade spam filters and gains victims' trust. For example, a scammer might send 
an email um, appearing to come from the IRS pretending to be the IRS this email tells and the target that there is a problem with their tax return um, to resolve the issue the target must call a phone number uh, provided in the email which connects them directly to the uh, scammers and scammer will use that information you will see sometimes scammers mm, they they you do get call the, mm, the law enforcement officers and many of the law enforcement officers have posted their interaction they recorded this their interaction with the spammers and have posted it online of course the scammers were not able to scam them because they are well trained in um, these areas so um, the we need of course we'll discuss the signs but before that let's look at the federal laws at the federal level in 2003 um, can spam controlling the assault of non-solicited pornography and marketing act of 2003 was signed by George W. Bush. It set standard for sending uh, uh, commercial emails, and it, it's misdemeanor to send spam with the false handle information. And then Anti Phishing Act of 2004. It never got past committee. Um, Anti Phishing Act of 2005. It was never enacted. Um, this law, had it passed, would have placed a larger fines and lengthy prison sentences for fake website and bogus. Uh, activities. Uh, the in the in Indiana, uh, there is a local law section 354354, um, which deals with uh, overall um, type of phishing, not specific to the um, e medium, the electronic medium. Um, the federal laws control phishing because it's an interstate fraud. Phishing has not yet been addressed by the. Uh, in, in specific to the email and message has not been addressed by the lawmakers of the Indiana. Um, the, the, in terms of the commercial compliance, commercial emails allowed as long as those conform to three types of compliances. Um, the a method to unsubscribe from the future rail must be provided. That's why you see most of the email have a, uh, a small um, unscribed link in the footnote. Um, then they contain relevant subject line, accurate form lines, uh, alleged physical address of the publisher, advertiser, content is exempt if it consists of national security message, political message or the religious message. So um, the more than 90% of the identity thefts and data breaches start with the phishing emails. So you need to be watching for the signs of the phishing attacks and you also need to uh, train your users um, to uh, be watchful uh, phishing scams pose as a trusted company, a favorite retailer, software provider, your state tax agency, even the IRS. Um, the, the phishing email tells an urgent story. So that's generally the first sign. Uh, on the there is a problem with your account or you have a tax refund uh, pending and accordingly it instructs you open a hyperlink uh, in the email or download an attachment the link may, might then send you to <coughs> the website that looks familiar and um, but your username and password goes to the thieves so um, that's the urgency is one uh, part uh, uh, the uh, then the other, the strong emotions and pressure tactics, uh, phishing scams try to make victims feel a sense of urgency so that they act quickly without thinking. Uh, scammers often do this by invoking strong emotions like fear, greed and curiosity. They might impose time limits and threaten unrealistic consequences such as jail time. Common phishing uses include uh, number one, there is a problem with your account or financial information. You must update it to avoid losing access. Um, number two, we have detected illegal activity. Pay this fine now or else you will be arrested. Number three, you have won a free gift but you must claim it right now. Number four, this invoice is overdue. You must pay it immediately or, will, or we will shut off your service. Uh, number five, the, we have an exciting investment opportunity for you. Deposit money now and we can guarantee incredible 
return so these are some of the um, examples in this case so um, the that attachment may secretly download malicious software the mobile phone users are especially prone to responding the action is if you are at home just delete it at, at, at work um, follow your organization's IT guidance and um, you should train your users not to take the uh, bait the um, this is another example so this is the request for money or sensitive information um, the uh, the many phishing gangs operate internationally which means they often write phishing messages in languages that uh, they don't speak fluently so there will be poor spelling and grammar mistakes as well um, many phishing attempts contain grammatical errors and inconsistencies uh, phishing scams typically ask for one of the two things money or data unsolicited or um, unexpected requests for payments or personal information can be signs of phishing attacks Scammers disguise their request for money as overdue invoices, fines, or fee for services. They disguise requests for information as notices to the update payment or account information. So, in this sample phishing email, um, after the last annual calculation of your fiscal activity, we have determined that you are eligible to receive a tax refund. Please um, submit a tax refund request. A refund could be delayed to access your tax refund form please click here uh, so in this case uh, once the user click that that will lead to a fraudulent website and hence it could be used to steal some information other signs to watch for are the in terms of the generic messages um, messages from uh, legitimate brands often contain specific details they might address customers by name, reference specific order numbers are explained precisely what the problem is, a vague message um, such as that there is an issue with your account with no further detail is a red flag. Fake email like in this case the click here link will definitely um, uh, most likely to contain uh, the, uh, the fake URL or email address. Uh, so in this case, uh, they, that fake URL email address that appears good um, at first glance uh, could be used to steal information. For example, in this case, it might come from um, the some part is, for, is from the IRS in the either in the from address or in the subject. Um, so the uh, there, but there might be a might spelling change in that case. There, there are different examples. There is one quiz in the end in which you will be able to identify those minor changes. Uh, so another common tactic is using the URL like banking app something scamsite.com. User might think this link goes to the banking app.com, but it actually points to a subdomain of scammers that site so like for, for example one drive google drive so that will be the first link and after that instead of going to the google.com or microsoft.com it will lead to you to some other third party uh, website so um, the other signs um, uh, might include scammers might send files uh, and attachments that um, the target did not request and um, does not expect they might use the image of uh, the text instead of the actual text in the message um, and web pages to avoid um, spam filters. So this is the third uh, compliance. Previously, we, we have already discussed two types of compliances. One is that uh, the email, business email, should be should provide the sub, um, unsubscribe link in the in that message. Second, we saw that relevant subject line should be there only the exemption of the uh, the national security religious and political emails uh, the third is uh, the commercial compliance uh, is related to the sending behavior where it states that message cannot be sent through an open relay message cannot be sent to a harvested email address message cannot contain a, a, a false header so this is the third uh, in order to ensure that uh, the uh, that the mail the, the email is not classified as the spam so the penalty is um, Jeff Brett was the first person prosecuted under the can spam act that we discussed earlier 
um, dupe AOL customers by sending emails that appear to be from AOL's billing department, which required users to reveal their reveal their personal and credit card information. Sentenced to 2000 uh, in 2007 to 70 months and was ordered to pay over one million dollar to uh, his victims. And now let's look at the uh, the prevention and mitigation. Um, the one is the um, the management application where uh, security awareness training and organizational policies play um, policies play an important role because phishing scams target people. Employees are um, are often an organization organizations first and last line of defense against these attacks. Organizations can teach. Um, users how to recognize the sign of phishing attempts and respond to suspicious emails and text messages. This can include giving employees easy ways to report phishing attempts to the IT or security team. Um, organization can also establish policies and practices that make it harder for phishers to succeed. For example, Organizations can forbid people, forbid people from initiating monetary transfers over email. They can require employees to verify requests for money or information by contacting the requester through other means uh, other than those provided in the message. Uh, for example, employees can type a URL directly into their uh, browser instead of clicking a link or call a colleague's first line instead of uh, replying to a text from the unknown number. Other is don't give out the company's log information to suspicious emails. Never log in through an email from a business partner is asked. Go to their corporate website and log on how would you normally do. In addition, in addition to the management, organizations can supplement employees training and companies policy with security tools that can help detect phishing messages and threat hackers who use phishing to break into networks. <clears throat> For example, spam filters uh, make use of mm, mm, latest browsers, patching, updates, computer security programs, uh, toolbars. So spam filters and email security software use data on existing phishing scams and machine learning algorithms to identify phishing emails and other uh, spam messages uh, the scams and spam are then moved to a separate folder where malicious links and code are eradicated. Um, antivirus softwares can detect and neutralize malicious files or code carried by malicious email. Multi-factor authentication as we discussed in the authentication topic of this course. Um, it can prevent hackers from taking over user accounts in case of the password leak through social engineering or through the phishing attempts. Um, web filters. Um, prevents users from visiting non malicious website and display alerts whenever user visits um, a suspicious page. These tools can help mitigate damage if a user clicks a phishing link. Uh, um, enterprise security solutions such as security orchestration, automation, response, SOR, and security information and e event management platforms, SIEM. Use AI and automation to detect and respond to anomalous, uh, to anomalous activity. Uh, these solutions can help staff fishers who are attempting to install uh, malware or take over uh, user account. Let's take a phishing quiz now. Let's let's take this phishing quiz now. The link to the quiz is given in the slides. Uh, it's uh, a phishing quiz. One word. Uh, that with google.com um, so can you uh, can you spot when you are being fished so the it's, uh, identifying phishing can be hard then you think phishing is an attempt to trick you into giving up your personal information by pretending to someone you know can you tell what's fake so let's take this quiz and um, name is cnit and let's give 270 here get started CNIT 270 uh, at the rate of um, gmail.com. So the first is uh, let's start with this Google Doc email. Be sure to check out URLs by hovering over or using long presses. So um, the Luke Johnson has shared a link to the following document. So you see that uh, once you hover over that link, it gives you to the 
drive it's in the bottom drive dash dash google dot com which is the fake link and then also open in docs is also taking you to that link over there so that's why it's a phishing correct this is a phishing email you must have spotted a look alike uh, url so um, if you click on show me this is show you this is this link is done drive dot google dot com and uh, next is received a fax um, so you have received a one page that fax so here in this case it's efax dot hosting dot mail alert you um, so this is not good and then it's efax here and it's efax so basically there is a spelling mistake as well so let's see it's a phishing um, as you saw the sender email known as efax instead of fax it said the link actually malu.382.co so in this case even though you see efax was okay then hosting.com and then there was an additional domain at the end which was the fishers domain and um, was intended to be deceived okay so click on show me so efax and it will show you also that the mail are in you next is the time for trip down a memory lane so in this case it's coming from tk um, remember this photo so instead of taking you to actual drive.google.com so if you are in a hurry you will see okay this drive look at the bottom drive.google.com uh, but it's not the uh, after that is download dot photo dot something over there so that's why it's phishing uh, this is a phishing email you show me because it's coming from the link um, that's taking you to the something else it's not the uh, google drive website okay next uh, oh looks like you are out of storage this is a dropbox full no longer uh, drawbox.com good so drawbox email yes this is this looks like okay because although they can send emails from the dropbox and the link is actually on the drawbox.com website so this is a legit yes this is a legit website because um, if you click on the show me um, it will show you a quick search for the dropbox mail.com will show its legit you can check the sender's domain the email address and then you can also click on the next it's a dropbox ram dropbox.com is a legit user uh, legit uh, domain name okay so we've done that next um, so this we received a new kind of report from the school so um, the the usually their emails come from uh, the westmountschool.org but here you see westmount day school so there is an additional world over there so this is definitely phishing because their emails usually come from this and then on this uh, once you click on this you don't know where it will take you so it's phishing uh, show more uh, because the mounts the mails come from the mount school it's the no the phishing have used just one additional word added to this be careful when opening pdf especially if you don't expect them okay so this is number five somebody someone have has been trying to access your account someone has your password it's coming from the google dot sport um, and then once you could uh, click on the change password it takes you to the my account at google dot com and then security setting page dot ml dot security dot org so this is false although they have copied the message correctly something this but the the google dot sport so there are two issues with this one um, one is google dot sport is not used second the the links point to mlsecurity.org instead of taking you um, to the Google's website. Um, next, this one, government back attackers may try to steal your password. So google.com, it's take you to the google.com. It Google, it's coming from the Google support. It's phishing. Um, this is based on a real warning. The warning is real that there is a chance of Aslam, but we believe this. So they copied this message, but the google.sport is not used. And this change password um, is taking you to the tinyurl.com, something over there. So show me google.sport next tinyurl. So these two issues over there are the uh, common problems in this case. Uh, mm, next, uh, the you have signed up for a travel planning server. So this is the cnh270gmail.com. Uh, view message you are in this case once you allow 
they are uh, they are asking your permission although sometimes so this this is a bit critical because sometimes uh, applications can ask for this so they are not showing anything over there um, and because this is just notification over there so let's push yes legit because it's the 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 um, trip it is in this case is asking for permission uh, or it's coming from the Google so this is okay but you also need to be careful that whether uh, they you should not give the blanket permissions that's the rule of thumb they should not ask permission to everything on your on your device the, you should be selective in terms of the granting permissions and once you get the message you should be able to verify whether the permissions that you are granting are indeed the permissions that are desired okay so um, the shows that requesting up names but should click on to make sure the additional details are given over there okay so that's it you great job uh, cnit 270 you got eight uh, over eight correct practice made perfect and make and the more you understand what you look for the safer you are from the phishing attacks please practice this in one more time um today we have discussed what's phishing <coughs> we defined phishing different types so we discussed in detail different types of the phishing and then also what are the recent uh, trends how which fishing mediums are used what are the laws um, uh, of the fishing what are the management practices and the tools available and then we also looked at this uh, quiz let me know if you have questions otherwise i will see you tomorrow and tomorrow we are going to discuss the network security topic so um, the, that topic will also be included on the exam uh, please start preparing for the exam don't wait for wait for the thursday although we are going to do a review on uh, uh, this um, uh, wednesday but you should start working on the exam uh, early if you have questions please let me know thank you otherwise i will see you tomorrow